Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And happy new year. The Lord be with you. And we hear the words of 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6. God, who said, Out of darkness, light shall shine, has caused his light to shine in our hearts, the light which is knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And Titus 2, verse 11. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. We begin this morning by turning to hymn number 200 and singing The Sinless One to Jordan Came to Share Our Fallen Nature's Blame. Hymn number 200. We come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Let us pray. We join together in the words at the top of page 102. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done, and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we stand together. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. For our psalm, we're turning to Psalm 29 on page 622. And we read in half verses. Psalm 29 on page 622. Ascribe to the Lord, you powers of heaven. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty in operation. The voice of the Lord is a glorious voice. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flash of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees rise and strips the forests bare. In his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the water flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading can be found on page 149 of the New Testament and is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptised? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptised with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to read the Epiphany Gospel. Um, Epiphany was officially yesterday, but we can celebrate over uh, this weekend. So it can be found in Matthew chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 1. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me words so that I may also go and pay him homage. 
When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and mare. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'll read our reading for today, the first Sunday after the Epiphany. This, the third reading can be found on page 37 of the New Testament and is from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 1, beginning at verse 4. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of J Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in the words of the Venite on page 103. Please stand. <clears throat> o come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it, his hands moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Today, if only you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me. Put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I loathed that generation and said, It is a people who err in their hearts, for they do not know my ways, of whom I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. We remain standing and proclaim our beliefs in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 112. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. 
Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the King, and grant his government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. And the collect for today. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, Grant to us, who are born of water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Collect for Epiphany. O God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may at last behold your glory face to face, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the second collect for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We join together in the words of the third collect for grace on page 114. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger, and in all things guide us to know and do your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We turn to our hymn books again to hymn number 310, Spirit of the Living God, Fall Afresh on Me, hymn number 310. Declare the Glory of God, a poem by Helen Steiner Rice. You ask me how I know it's true that there is a living God, a God who rules the universe, the sky, the sea, the sod, a God who holds all creatures in the hollow of his hand. A God who put infinity in one tiny grain of sand. A God who made the seasons, winter, summer, autumn, spring, and put his flawless rhythm into each created thing. 
A God who hangs the sun out slowly with the break of day and gently takes the stars in and puts the night away. A God whose mighty handiwork defies the skill of man, for no architect can alter God's perfect master plan. What better answers are there to prove his holy being than the wonders all around us that are ours just for the seeing. O oh Lord, as the years change, may we find rest in your eternal changelessness. Help us to meet this new year bravely in the faith that while life changes all around us, you are always the same, guiding us with your wisdom and protecting us with your love. Through our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. For all the possibilities ahead in this new year, make us thankful, O Lord. Give us wisdom, courage, and discernment in the face of so much chaos, despair, and fear. Let the radiance of your Spirit renew our lives, warming our hearts and giving light to our minds, that we may pass the coming year in joyful obedience and firm faith through him who is the beginning and the end, your Son, our Lord. Amen. God, we are constantly aware of how much we need you, your grace, your strength, your power working through even the toughest days. Help us to keep our focus on you. Please forgive us for giving too much time and attention to other things, for looking to other people before coming to you. Help us to reflect again on what Epiphany is really all about. Thank you that you came to give new life, peace, hope and joy. Thank you that your power is made perfect in our weakness. Help us to remember that the gift of Christ, Emmanuel, is our greatest treasure not just at Christmas, but for the whole year through. Fill us with your joy and the peace of your spirit. Direct our hearts and minds towards you. Thank you for your reminder that both in seasons of celebration and in seasons of brokenness, you're still with us, for you never leave us. Thank you for your daily powerful presence in our lives that we can be assured your heart is towards us, your eyes are over us, and your ears are open to our prayers. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And in our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for our Archbishop, John Madol. We pray for St. Patrick's Cathedral and the Dean, Dean Shane Forster and the Cathedral Readers, Florence Hoey, and the Cathedral Chapter and Staff of the Cathedral. We also pray for David Brown, the Youth Minister, working with Armagh Youth and Children's Board as their Development Officer. And in our Anglican community, we pray for the Scottish Episcopal Church. And we pray for the needs of the world, for peace, and goodwill over all the earth. For unity within the church he came to build. And we take time to remember the poor and the helpless, the cold, hungry and oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and the housebound. This morning we particularly remember the victims of the King's Mill Massacre. We pray for comfort for their families in what is the 48th anniversary of this atrocity. We pray that they will know your presence with them now and always. And we bring our time of prayer to a close by joining together in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.
Amen. Now we turn to our hymn books again to hymn number 210. Holy God of righteous glory, see your people gathered here. Hymn number 210. the light of your word and grant us the guidance of your Holy Spirit as we discover your will and purpose for our lives, equipping us to serve you in the world and to honour and glorify your name. Amen. <coughs> Yesterday, the 6th of January, is known as Epiphany and we all know about the three wise men. So whenever someone mentioned to me that there was a fourth wise man, I wise man, I hardly believed him. And I said, Well, tell me all about him. And so I'm going to tell you the little story he told me. There were four wise men standing beside an enormous barn. The farmer approached them and said, if you can fill the barn in one hour, I will give you the barn. Well, I think that's a great deal. So, you need to get thinking. The first wise man filled it with bales of straw. But he didn't even make it a quarter of the way across before the hour was up. The second wise man filled it with large round bales. I'm sure you can see him doing it. Well, he only made it halfway across before the hour was up. The third wise man filled it with sacks of grain. 
he only made it about a third of the way across. And finally, we come to the fourth wise man. He filled the floor of the barn with candles. And the other three wise men stood laughing at him as he started to light them. Just as the hour was up, the farmer walked over to him and said, The barn is yours because you have filled it with light. This story got me thinking and doing a little bit of research because I wondered, maybe there really is a story about a fourth wise man. And you can look it up as well because in 1895, Henry Van Dyke published a story called The Fourth Wise Man. And it's a lovely story. I've read it and I've, I've told this story lots of times because it really has made an impact on my life. And I really hope that maybe the story today will make an impact on your life as well as we walk into a new year. The story tells about a fourth wise man, a priest of the Magi named Artaban. And he was one of the Medes from Persia. And like the other Magi, he sees signs in the heavens proclaiming that a king has been born among the Jews. And like them, he sets out to see the newborn ruler, carrying with him gifts to give to the child. So, in the Bible we hear about the gold, the frankincense and the mare. And in this story about Artaban, we hear about a sapphire, a ruby and a pearl of great price. This is Artaban's story. There lived in ancient Persia a certain man named Artaban. He was a member of the far-flung community of Zoroastrian scholars, known as Magi. Zoroastrians were astrologers and believed in the search for goodness and light. Artaban tells his fellow Magi that soon he will join three others and together they will search for the one promised to be born king of Israel. Selling all his possessions, Artaban bought three jewels, a sapphire, a ruby, and a pearl, and he would carry them as tribute to the king. So Artaban started his journey. He had only 10 days to meet his three companions. And so as he neared the meeting place at the appointed time, he came upon a dying man lying in the road. What would he do? Would he stop and give the dying man a cup of water? Or should he press on to meet with his companions? Now, because he was a physician as well as an astrologer, Artaban stopped. And hour after hour, he labored as only a skilled healer could. And very slowly, the man's strength began to return. Then, pressing on, Artaban discovered his friends had gone on without him. He was forced to sell his sapphire to buy a train of camels and provisions for the journey. He then arrived in Bethlehem, just as the cruel soldiers of King Herod were killing the baby boys. The door of one house was open and Artaban could hear a mother singing a lullaby to her child. The woman told him that it was now three days since the three wise men had appeared in Bethlehem. They had found Joseph and Mary and the young child and had laid their gifts at his feet. Then they disappeared as mysteriously as they had arrived. Joseph had taken his wife and baby that same night and secretly fled. It's whispered that they had gone as far as way into Egypt. Outside there arose a great noise. Women were shrieking and there was a desperate cry saying, the soldiers of Herod are killing our children. Artaban went to the doorway and found a band of soldiers hurrying down the street with dripping swords and blood on their hands. 
the captain approached the door and Artaban stopped him and gave him the ruby, requesting that they leave the mother and baby alive. Then Artaban, still following the king, went on into Egypt, seeking everywhere for traces of the little family that had fled before him from Bethlehem. For 33 years, Artaban continued to look for the king, spending his years helping the poor and dying before at last coming to Jerusalem during the season of Passover. There was a great commotion in the street. A slave girl was being dragged by soldiers. She broke away from her tormentors and threw herself at Artaban's feet, taking his last treasure, the pearl. He gave it to the girl. This is your ransom, daughter. It is the last of my treasures I had kept for the king. Just as Artaban spoke, a powerful earthquake shook the city and he was struck by a roof tile. Artaban knew he was dying. He would not find the king. His quest was over and he had failed. The ransom slave girl holding the old dying man heard a sweet voice and saw Artaban's lips slowly moving. Master, I have long sought you. Forgive me. Once I had precious gifts to give. Now I have nothing. And Jesus oh. replied, Artaban, you've already given your gifts to me. I don't understand God, said Artaban. But the unmistakable voice came again and the slave girl heard it clearly. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was homeless, you took me in. Oh, not my saviour. I never saw you hungry nor thirsty. I never clothed you. I never brought you into my home. 33 years have I looked for you, but I have never seen your face nor ministered to you, my king. I've never seen you until now. Whenever you did these things for the least of my brothers, you did them for me. And Artaban declared, I have found the king and he has accepted all my gifts. Artaban met the king at last. Jesus who is the light of the world. In John 8 verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Artaban, in all his years searching for the king, let his light shine. In all his actions, in all his words, in all his ways of helping others. In this new year, let's not hide our lights. Let our light shine for the world to see. My prayer for each of us this year is that we light our world for Christ. And what we say and what we do in how we treat each other and in how we treat others. Let's shine bright for Christ. Let us pray. Holy child of Bethlehem, born in a stable, led in a manger, sitting beside our Father in heaven. Dwell in our hearts, Dwell in our homes and fill them with your love, your peace, your light, now and always. Amen.
For our offertory hymn, we turn to hymn number 204. When Jesus came to Jordan to be baptized by John, he did not come for pardon, but as his father's son. Hymn number 204. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this new year and forevermore. Amen. Amen.